Hi everyone, it's Cassie and today I'm going to talk about emotional wellness and mental health. I think it's a really important thing to talk about right now, especially in the time that we're in. It could be really stressful personally or just being stressed out and have anxiety about things that are happening in the world. So I thought it would be a great topic to cover about coping strategies and ways to manage your mental health and emotional wellness. Emotional wellness can be defined as the ability to successfully handle life stresses and adapt to change in difficult times. So first we'll start off talking about stress and anxiety. Stress can be beneficial temporarily, but if it lasts a long time, it can damage your health physically and mentally. The hormone that's involved with stress can actually change the structure of your brain if it is lasting too long. So we really want to learn how to manage the, your stress and live a healthy life. Factors that can help decrease stress include sleep, so, socialization, and exercise. We really want to try and get eight hours of sleep a night. And if you're having trouble falling asleep, some ways to help are creating a consistent bedtime routine, and having things that you do every night before you go to bed to just try to trigger your brain to let the brain know that it's time to calm down and sleep. Another way to help sleep is to decrease your screen time. So looking at TV or your phone before bed, try and do the, try and stop looking at your phone an hour before bed because research has shown that looking at your screen can actually cause you to have trouble falling asleep. And then socialization and exercise are also important in decreasing stress. Having a positive outlook on events in life is, is also a part of emotional wellness. Being able to identify positive aspects in your life and those around you will help in maintaining the balance of stressors that can occur. Self-reflection and meditation helps bring awareness to perceptions that you might have of yourself, and then that might lead to forgiveness. Being aware that you need to be kind to yourself and accept where you're at and being ready to allow yourself to make mistakes um, assists in that positive mindset. So really focusing on self Self-care and self-love is an important part of taking care of your mental health. Connecting with friends is another way to get that positive outlook and looking at things that you're grateful for in life. <clears throat> Research suggests that having a positive outlook on life can benefit your physical health as well. Another important part of emotional wellness is setting emotional boundaries. These can keep you from feeling overwhelmed and it's a way to conserve your energy. It's important to advocate for your emotional needs to your family, friends, um, and just anyone that you're around. <clears throat> Positive mental health allows you to cope with stress. And then asking for help if you are struggling with coping is always really important. Setting emotional boundaries can look like limiting your time on Watching the news, maybe if it gets you really overwhelmed and anxious, it's important to take those breaks from watching or reading the news to, again, use that self-care to focus and help cope with your anxiety. This is just kind of a summary slide of what I've gone over. So ways to cope can include stepping back from social media and news outlets, as I just said, when information can get overwhelming. Um, Ways to decrease stress also include engaging in hobbies and physical activities, maybe with family or friends or by yourself. Journaling is also a great way to cope with anxiety and that is gonna be talked about more on the next slide. Engaging in community is another option and you can, this can look like volunteering, learning something new, or maybe taking a class that's offered in the community. Mindfulness was, there was just a presentation on it by Riley that was really great and she gives examples and benefits of how mindfulness can help with coping with anxiety um, and she explains it in depth so she explains all the other benefits as well um, and then speaking to your medical provider about ways to manage your personal risk is also important so this is the journaling slide and so I found a list of prompts for daily journaling that can be really helpful and this one was actually targeted at self-quarantine so um, you can just take some a couple minutes out of your day to just read one of these questions and then write down your thoughts and maybe you'll learn a little bit more about yourself and how you can cope so you can pause this video and maybe write these down or come back to it and look at these steps and then the next slide here are 
the list of the other questions. These apps, um, Riley had on her slide as well. These are both free. That one's called Calm on the left. And then the orange circle is called Headspace. So you can, these are just easy ways to incorporate meditation and mindfulness into your day on your phone or on your laptop. And I wanted to end with some inspirational quotes um, just to be a little uplifting and motivating. It says, whenever you find yourself doubting how far you can go, just remember how far you have come. Remember everything you have faced, all the battles you have won, and all the fears you have overcome. And then the next one says, when you find yourself in an unpleasant state of mind, simply remind yourself, this too shall pass. And here are some references about mental health. And then the next part of this video will just be me going over the handout that I provided and the links for resources to help you there. So this part of the video, I'm just going to go through the handout of resources I provided along with the PowerPoint. And this is just two pages of resources I found online and in person in the Kansas City area. And I'm not from Kansas City, so this is just what I found online. If you know more resources that have, you've used in the past in Kansas City, feel free to share them because I'm, you're, you guys definitely know more than I do in what's available to you in the area. So I'll just go through the ones that I provided. The telephone number listed first is a non-crisis peer support number that offers coping strategies, information, and reprieve from loneliness or isolation. And I thought that might be really helpful, especially in this time when we might all still be staying home and staying safe. This might just be um, a good resource for companionship or just learning more information. The virtual room of refuge is one of my favorites. If you just click on this link, it provides you with a lot of different simple, easy, quick options at home to help reduce anxiety and relieve stress. The first part of it is music assisted relaxation and it's just five minute meditations. And then the next part describes how to create a sensory kit. Sensory kits are really great for reducing anxiety and it's really connected to emotions like what you taste or what you touch or smell can really bring out certain emotions. And so this lets you know how to build a sensory kit that can reduce your anxiety and feel calm. It provides videos. Mindful Minute Cards is just a PDF of things that you can use in your daily life. Um, how to use grounding strategies and self-care. And then this movement section is really awesome. It provides, if you click on each of these pictures, it'll bring you to a YouTube link for stretching videos, either sit, seating, <laughs> sorry, in seated position or standing or on the floor. So these are a lot of different um, options if you wanna get some stretching into your daily practice. And then it provides animal cams, which is super fun from the Kansas City Zoo. And I think watching webcams of animals is always a fun way to lift your spirits, especially if you can't go to the zoo in person anytime soon. And then it provides nature videos and humor as well. So that was the virtual room of refuge. I won't go through them all. I just want to touch on a couple of these. The mindful breathing and meditations, the UCLA link takes you to a website that provides a whole list of different types of meditations. You can either play them over here with the audio or you can read a transcript of them. And I like that it provides a lot of different options lasting from five minutes or 20 minutes. And then there's also some in Spanish as well. The anxiety support group is in person and I'm not sure you might have to contact them to see if they've decided to do a virtual one during the pandemic. Um, it's a support group for family and friends of individuals with an anxiety disorder. So it just gives you an opportunity to meet and talk with peers to get a better understanding of disorders and treatment. The Aphasia Recovery Connection offers virtual classes right now that look like a lot of fun. Here's a calendar of it. And they just have a schedule throughout the day and you're allowed to register for three maximum per week. Registration is just below on the website and the caregivers are also allowed one session. So I just like that there's themes for each session and it's free. It's just a great way to meet up um, and just practice those skills for talking. 
that was the aphasian connection resource these other free resources just provide coping skills and strategies for a lot of different tips for decreasing anxiety and just mental health overall the 10 tools website is looks like this and it gives you different tools for helping others getting enough sleep eating well when you click on each one of these it'll bring you to a separate page to provide more specific details on that specific tool so the eating well brings you to a whole page about nutrition and then the rest of this page is just support groups and outpatient therapy in the kansas city area again i'm not from there so this is just what i found online and if you have um, resources that you've used in the past feel free to share them if you had um, a good experience and would recommend to others these are ones that I found. Um, this one offers chair yoga and then group therapy. And here are all the links provided. So I hope you found these helpful um, and are able to use these, especially in this time where it can be really stressful or lonesome or a lot of anxiety around what's going on in the world. So hopefully you can use these at home. Thank you.